Ever since the disappearance of the Lexus GS, I have been waiting for Lexus to give us an all-wheel drive version of the ES. Well, it's finally here, an all-wheel drive Lexus ES. But wait, what's this 250 badging? Wait, so the all-wheel drive isn't available on the V6 Power 350? What the heck? Yep, my name is Omar and this is the 2022 Lexus ES250 all-wheel drive. So yeah, instead of giving us all-wheel drive on the ES350, which would have made that a very impressive long-term purchase, last year Lexus gave us all-wheel drive on a new trim level called the ES250. This is the first time I'm driving it. And how much power are we working with? Well, take the 302 from the ES350 and say it backwards. So what Lexus did was take the 2.5 liter four-cylinder from the ES Hybrid, remove all the hybrid stuff, and give us an engine that makes 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. And with the extra weight from the all-wheel drive system, that makes the ES250 heavier than the ES350 and the ES300 hybrid, meaning it's really, really slow. So yeah, if you're upset that the 350 didn't get the all-wheel drive system, hit that like button out of anger, and then hit that big red button that says subscribe to bring that anger home. So how slow is this? Zero to 60 will take you 8.6 seconds. Pop it into sport mode and step on the gas. And it sounds like it's doing something, but the speedometer is just moving up a little slowly. What I would love to see Lexus do is take the setup from the IS500 performance, put it in here, call it an ES500 performance, make it all-wheel drive, and I can guarantee you that people will take this car way more seriously. And maybe that's okay, because even though this is not fast, I don't think ES buyers will really care. You see, the reasons that people buy the ES is the very affordable price tag, the outstanding reliability, and the butter, butter smooth ride quality. You're basically swaddled in a nice, comfortable blanket away from the harshness of the world outside. Now, all Lexuses, what's plural for Lexus? Who knows? But all Lexuses are known to have a very comfortable ride quality, but the ES here takes it to the next level. This thing is just as, if not more comfortable than the competition. It's also as comfortable as the Lexus LS and even the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Now don't get mad and start hating in the comments because you know it's true and that's why you're upset right now. The most affordable sleeper luxury sedan on the market is just as comfortable as a $100,000 plus Uber luxury sedan. Slower, but just as comfortable. Not to beat that whole slow horse to death, but I keep thinking why even offer the F-Sport on the 250? Yes, it gets an F-Tune Sport suspension, but you don't even have enough power to do anything fun. For 2022, Lexus does offer something called the Dynamic Handling Package on the F-Sport, but not on this one, only on the ES350 F-Sport. What else is new for 2022? Let's take a look. You know, it's a bit strange to me that in 2022, a touchscreen display is still something new in a car, but hey, this is a Lexus. Lexus has been slowly moving over two touchscreen displays and the ES now finally has one. And don't worry, it's not set too far back like on the previous ES, Lexus has moved it forward by 4.3 inches so you can now touch it easily. But you still have the touchpad down here in case you missed the good old days. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard across the lineup. Now this is the upgraded 12.3 inch display right here. That is optional on all trims except the ultra luxury trim. If you want the bigger display with navigation, you'll have to pay an extra $2,900. All right, moving on, also new for 2022 is the Lexus Safety System Plus 2.5 standard on all ES trims. This will give you a bunch of driver assist tech, including a pre-collision system, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, pedestrian and bicyclist detection. Where is a bicyclist when you need one to demonstrate something, damn it? You get adaptive cruise control with curve speed reduction, lane departure warning with steering assist, roadside recognition. And for 2022, you can also get blind spot monitoring along with rear cross traffic alert as an option. Also new for 2022 is the redesigned by LED headlamps with dynamic auto leveling. They look really sharp and very nice. Usually you have to pay extra for these dynamic headlights on other cars, not on the ES. And for the first time ever, the ES hybrid gets an F Sport trim. So now you just won't be another boring hybrid sedan on the road. You'll have some F and Sport. Yeah. Okay. I guess we could just write off the whole F Sport thing as an appearance package because the F-Sport does look better than the regular ES, at least to me, but I don't think ES buyers will care one way or another. Speaking of buyers, while a lot of us out there, including me, are buying cars because they carry a top-tier luxury badge or name, I'm proud to say 
that we are outnumbered by smart and sensible car buyers. How do I know that? Because the ES outsells everything in this segment. Lexus sells significantly more units of the ES annually than the BMW 5 Series, a little bit more than the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, and way more than the Audi A6, and way more than the more affordable Toyota Avalon. Now I know what you're thinking. Omar, this isn't a competitor to the 5 Series, the E-Class, the Audi A6, because this isn't as cool and innovative as those German luxury sedans. You're right, but this is a luxury sedan at the end of the day, so there's that. And there are a few cool things that always stick out to me about the ES. Let me point them out. All right, so let's do a quick rapid fire session of some of the things that I really like about the ES. First up, you have plenty of legroom back here. You have a total of 39.2 inches of legroom in the second row, which is a lot. It is very spacious. The second thing that I like about the ES is that it's very, very comfortable. Lexus has put a lot of thought into making this a very comfortable place to be. You have padded armrest everywhere, and you also have this nice padded knee area so you can rest your knee while you're driving. The front and center armrest is nicely padded, making it a very comfortable place to rest your arm. And the rear armrest hasn't been neglected. It's actually even softer and more comfortable than the front armrest. You have soft fake leather or real leather, depending on the trim you get on the back of the front seats. So in case you're insanely tall, your knees are hitting this, it'll not be too uncomfortable. In the front, you have two cup holders. One is in the front right there, and one is right here. This one here has two level settings, one that's really deep and one that's a little bit higher so you can fit your smaller drinks. That's very convenient. I still think Lexus has one of the coolest drive mode selectors. I think they're starting to go away with newer generation Lexus models, so I'm gonna miss this. And if you're somebody that still loves analog clocks, you have one here in the ES. And one of my favorite things about the ES F Sport and other F Sport Lexus models is that the digital display in the center, it's eight inches and it moves side to side. Love that. And of course, the price tag of the Lexus ES is also very impressive. Not only is this one of the most reliable luxury sedans that you can buy, it's also one of the most affordable. Now, the interesting thing about the pricing is that the ES250 all-wheel drive and the ES350 are all priced the same. The ES250 all-wheel drive starts at $41,875, and so does the base ES350. The ES250 all-wheel drive F-Sport starts at $46,525, as does the ES350 F-Sport. Now, I'm not going to go into a full trim breakdown, otherwise we'll be here all day, but just to give you some insight, if you want heated and cooled seats, as standard, you want to start at the F-Sport trims and above. A heated steering wheel is standard on the luxury and the ultra luxury trim. It's optional on the F-Sport trims and not available on the base trims. If you want real leather seats, you'll have to go for the two luxury trims, the base and the F-Sport get the new Lux fake leather, although I have to say it's pretty convincing and it is a very comfortable material. Again, you'll get an eight inch touchscreen display as standard, but if you want the upgraded 12.3 inch touchscreen display here with navigation, you'll have to go for the navigation and Mark Levinson sound package for $2,900. Of course, that will also give you the upgraded Mark Levinson sound system. So there is a lot to like about the ES, but there are a few things that bother me. For example, cargo capacity comes in at 13.9 cubic feet, 14 cubic feet, but you don't have 60, 40 split rear seats, to use up more room, you just have a tiny pass-through. Having a touchscreen display is nice, finally, but to access all the menu options, you have to hit the menu button down here on the touchpad and then select whatever it is that you wanna select. And one more thing that I really hate is that I am obsessed with syncing the temperature. I have passengers that come sit in the car that I'm driving and they adjust their own temperature. There's no sync dedicated button. You have to hit menu, slide over to climate, then go into let's say options and then you hit the dual which means sync that's too many steps to just sync the temperature oh man i almost forgot to do my whole random thing segment where i point out the door open and close sound the horn sound the charging game because there is something very interesting that i want to show you about the charging game so let me show you charging game wise you're working with two usb a ports right here next to this front cup holder and a slot to put your phone in your wireless charger is right here in the armrest which you can open from both sides so that's pretty cool. Now check this out. The rear passengers get two USB-C ports. The front passengers don't get any USB-C ports. I don't know why that is, but you know, that's Lexus's way of doing things, I guess. I actually have been charging my phone through the USB-C port and pulling the wire to the front because it charges much faster. There are four cup holders in this thing. You got one right there, one right there, and then you have two in the back for the rear passengers in that nice squishy armrest. Here are what the keys look like to the 2022 ES. You can remote start it with the Lexus Inform app or you can hit the lock button three times, hold on the third. Two, three. No? There we go. 
Nice. Takes a minute, but yeah. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside. And now it's time for an indicator and horn sound test here with the 2022 Lexus ES. Indicator first. Same old Lexus indicator. Horn sound. Oh yeah. I like it. Solid. Now I know no one out there that just bought an Audi A6 BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes-Benz E-Class is watching this video thinking, oh man, I really missed out. And they shouldn't feel that way. They bought an outstanding luxury sedan that will last them a few years. They'll drive it, they'll love it, they'll always look down on the owner of an ES and think, well, it's not as appealing as my German luxury sedan. But in the words of The Rock Dwayne Johnson, I can guarantee to you that any ES owner on the road is spending less time worrying about the longevity, reliability, and the resale value of their car. They might be driving a few cars behind you looking less flashy, but they are just as comfortable and a lot less stressed either way. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. And if you enjoy cars, and if you have friends that enjoy cars and you like my reviews, share it with them. Let them know about me. Pop it into sport mode and go over some bumps. Come on. 59, 60, 64. Very smooth. Not sporty, just smooth.